from J.A. to U.K. to L.A. and everywhere else. Now this is a podcast strictly influenced by Jamaican music. Brought to you by Every Caller and Junior Francis. Well, if you're driving in your car or you're sitting home alone, the Junior entertain you on his microphone. The history of huh. L.A. Sky. Yeah. Hear stories from a guest while we all have a blast. From L.A. to Jamaica, it's in the podcast. Welcome to the History of LA Sky one-on-one sessions. I'm your host, uh, Junior Francis, alongside our producer and my good friend, Eric Kohler. This series celebrates the Sky rocksteady and vintage reggae scene in Southern California and beyond through insightful conversations with legends and modern day talent, including those behind the scenes. So we thank all the people who have been working behind the scenes, doing a wonderful job. So when you listen to this podcast series, uh, watch us on YouTube. Thanks for your support. Thank you. Thank you. And please remember to subscribe and tell a friend, tell as many friends as you possibly can. On this episode, we welcome singer, songwriter, musician, Jeremy Pina of uh, the now Oregon-based Skia Soul Reggae outfit, the Bandulas. Uh, We know know strangers. Uh, (laughs) Neither is Eric. Uh, Yes. So good connecting. Good connecting. Welcome, Jeremy. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so yeah. much for having me, man. It's, it's yes, a yes, yes, pleasure. Yes, absolutely. Uh, yeah. and, and and I think it's officially Jeremy Pena. Yeah, Pena. Yeah. Pena with the with the uh, so the A is broad. Yeah. Well, we got the Enya yeah. on the Enya. Yeah. Right. Enya. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how did I say it? Yeah, you were close. All good. We'll we'll we'll, we'll yeah. rewind the tape and fix it in post. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> um. So Jeremy, yeah, thanks for for joining us. We're, we're gonna have some fun uh, here. Um, I, we were talking off the air. Definitely had FOMO uh, by not attending Supernova, but I know that that Junior got to see you guys. Yeah, we did spend some time. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, and I an know, amazing festival, eh? Man, what a what a good time that was. My okay. first time. Was that your first time there? My very first time. Oh. My very first time. So I I oh. yeah, I've never been. Um, I. I I loved it. I, I was there pretty much twelve hours each day. Like, yeah, man. Yeah, that was a wonderful like, debut for you guys. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, yeah it was. <laughs> yeah, hats off to Tim and April for that one. Yeah, I can't believe Tim actually. Tim actually drove six hours round trip to invite us in person. I was like, oh, wow, that's yeah. Cool. Instead of just sending an email, he was like, hey. we were playing over in uh, Washington D.C. and and uh, he showed up. And he was like, hey, man, um, would you guys like to play? I'm like, what? Yes, of course. Oh, that's super cool. <laughs> Yeah, really nice. The, the the competition was um incredible. I thought all the guys brought everybody brought their A game. I said, You're is- right. <laughs> <laughs> they really did. <laughs> yeah, somebody yeah. said these guys don't. Most of these guys don't now ordinarily play like, at this level. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I was I was happy to see some of the online, <laughs> some of the live stream, and I know that that they're offering people can watch it now still. <laughs> so, right. um, so Jeremy, uh, let's go back to early on in your in your life talk about growing up in texas yeah uh, your earliest exposure to music from from some of my reading and some of the previous interviews that i've i've heard you do um uh your dad was very musical but but, but touch on your upbringing yeah i well my, i'm like fourth generation i've been told musician in my family oh. um, it goes back to uh my you know great grandpa i believe maybe even before that who really knows um, but yeah, growing up, my, my grandpa owned a bar and my dad managed a bar. And on one side, it was a bar and restaurant, one side of, you know, the restaurant. And, and then, uh, they had the music, uh, actual live band, live music in the, uh, bar itself. And so my dad's band would play. And so when <laughs> I was, you know, before I was born, he was already doing that. And so when I was born, I was falling asleep behind the drum set. Oh, as, no, no. <laughs> hey, hey, and what, and what genre? Uh, he played uh, uh, pretty much every uh, like Tejano mostly Tejano cumbia salsa wow. and then uh, well it depends on what friends were over because okay. <laughs> with, yeah, with the white guys he would play with uh, like like country and okay. then uh, and then all the Chicanos he play you know the, the cumbia the salsa the Tejano yeah. and then and then uh, then he'd go across 
the street uh, where all, all all our black friends were, and they played the blues over there. Wow, <laughs> the multi talented. Yeah, so yeah, it was like right on this one corner in the town we grew up in. There, there was just like the all the minorities would hang out there, and um, and you know all the different cultures would gather, and 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 yeah, that's yeah. how you know all the different bands would be playing. So so, so exposure to a vast. Uh, amount and, and, and an array of different genres early yeah. on in your life and yeah. from birth actually right from birth. yeah from birth yeah yeah born into the musical family my uh the legend has it that my uh grandmother's uncle wrote the song sobre las olas which is uh over the waves it's like the old flying trapeze song oh right uh, okay yeah ah. like that uh, da, 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 yes 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 that song really so, uh, wow. his name is uh juventino oh. rosas okay. and he's from uh, uh uh guanajuato in central mexico and uh yeah he That's wrote that song. He, uh, <laughs> apparently legend has it that he helped bring the accordion to mexico as well so I don't know. I've, this is what I've been told, and I've read about his musical, life. Yeah, musical yeah, accomplishment. Mm. Was there was there any specific uh, genres early on that you were drawn to the most since you were exposed to so many? I was I was way into like boys to men, <laughs> <laughs> right. like the singing groups, you know, and of yeah. course, uh, uh, what modern day vocal groups, right? Yeah, and so that's what was going on. But then that like led to like Smokey Robinson and the Miracles, and then Otis Redding. And a lot of the soul stuff as well, and then, uh, and then when I got a little older, I was like way into the uh, Nirvana and punk rock and stuff. <laughs> yeah, so so you continue you were exposed to a variety of types of music early on, and and throughout your your life, it, it's continued to to be uh, kind of um, wide wide ranging. Uh, yeah, that's that's wild. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, describe for us uh, what this Kia reggae scene was like in Austin when you were growing up. Oh, well, I didn't really That's discover it until, um, until I graduated high school. Like we, we kind of knew about uh, ska punk was the thing, you know, no effects. We had some friends play. Uh, we had this little local uh, festival called the Hog Eye Festival. Oh, and uh, yeah. our friends, uh, uh, I can't remember their name at this point, but. They ended up, oh, they were called For Pete's Sake. And uh, they came and they started playing uh, no effects songs. So we were like, I was like, oh, what is this? Like, it really caught the attention of anyone who, like our town was a little, really small. We were outside, we're in a town called Elgin, Texas. Okay. It's like 30 minutes outside of Austin. Um, so like, we didn't really know about punk rock, like all the top 40 stuff was like the big stuff, you know? And so, uh, so there was just a little tiny click of, of punk rockers that uh that help expose our little tiny town to uh some no effects and stuff and i was like oh this is really cool like right so literally the weekend that i saw them i went and got one of their records and then and then eventually i was like well what is this part that they're like playing on the upbeat what is that like all right really interested in that and then uh a couple months later a friend of ours uh, uh one of the one of the guy's friends uh had a Hepcat CD, so I was like, "Yes, this is this this seems like a cousin to what my dad is playing." You know, it's just like oh. like real similar. Right, it had a soulful uh, sound to it. Mm -hmm. Right, what right. an introduction. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so it took a little while to get there, but yes. um, it was uh, it wasn't until the Slackers' "Wasted Days" came out. Yes, mm -hmm. and, uh, they were coming through Austin, and um, yeah, we had just graduated high school, so a friend of mine. I uh, was like, yo, we should go check out the show. So we went and checked it out. And then uh, there was a local band there called the Stingers, ATX. Oh, right. I remember, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and what time period was that? That is, uh, I, I got the, is November 2nd, 2001. <laughs> 2001. Okay. I still okay. have the poster. I'm I'm right. really right. crazy about dates. They, they, <laughs> they stay in there. So, so, so were the, were the Slackers the first ska band, ska band that you saw live? Uh, Traditional sky, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah right, right, right. Yeah, mm -hmm. traditional sky. I did see Goldfinger mm -hmm. uh, before that. Goldfinger right, and Rogan right. Fish and and some of the the, the fast right. like wow. But, uh, right, but yeah. So, what bands were you a member of prior to starting the band Uh I had a band called. Uh, in high school, we played ska punk, and we were really into the Suicide Machines and Rancid, 
And uh, that, that band was called Captain Bring Down and the Buzz Killers. <laughs> it's a Simpsons reference. Uh, and then before that, we had a band called Co Corpo Rico, which was basically the same guys. We just had, we added another singer when we changed the name. And, mm -hmm. uh, and then I ended up quitting them to join Los Carnales uh, mm -hmm. in about 2006. The other band that you saw and right, yeah, yeah, right, right. Yeah, um, yeah. I ended up playing with them out there too. Oh, so I'd, never, I'd never seen. I'd heard of them, but I'd never seen them live or, or even even uh, in New York. Man, I did in with a vengeance. <laughs> oh man, it was so much fun. <laughs> yeah, and but, uh, I just, uh, in in all my um, interaction with musicians over the years. Uh, I can say uh, that they're some of the nicest guys who I've never met before. Right. Nice oh, guys who I met them first time and instant friendship. Wow. I said, where do these guys come from? <laughs> Houston. Houston, Texas. No, I, I was just saying to myself. Oh, well, yeah. We're, oh, right. <laughs> even, if, even before the concert, they were very friendly. Yeah. They had no idea what. Wow. Was. Yeah. And they're just nice guys. Yeah. Yeah. They're sweethearts, I man. Never, just went around saying hi to everyone. Not yeah. necessarily looking for attention. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I, I have nothing but nice words. And um, hope to see them in Los Jeremy, Angeles. prior to Los Canales, the, the bands that you mentioned, um, those were like Scott Punk bands? Yeah, they were Scott Punk. Okay. And, and you played... were just figuring it out, like, like, how, <laughs> how it out. <laughs> and, 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 what, and what did you, what did you do in those bands? I played a uh, guitar and, and I was always like a sideman uh, singer and it, like I'd have a few songs featured and then those songs would usually go, be more traditional. And then, uh, but yeah, usually I was just playing guitar and then singing and doing the harmonies or, or second vocals. And then, uh, but yeah, after, uh, after I joined Scarnales, I was only in the band for about seven months and we ended up breaking up for a little while. And uh, we had this tour planned with Hub City Stompers to come out to L.A. Mm -hmm. to play at the Knitting Factory, the first three floors of Sky there in like 2000. Oh, right. Uh, 2008 Chris or something, something like that. Right, um, right. Guys, uh, it might be more like 2007 or even six. Who knows? That's what Chris I, was running. Yeah, for. Chris was doing uh, Blue Bee Lounge, but this was, yeah, Blue Bee Lounge must have still been happening there. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And, it, it it definitely was because I was like really uh, excited to go to the knitting factory. Right, we, right, right. Yeah, the, we ended up playing the main stage, but uh, uh, it was Ryan Scroggins and the Trinstown Texans is what we became after Scarnales broke up. The okay. core, a lot, a lot of the guys from Scarnales was in Ryan Scroggins' band, um, okay. and we already had this tour plan, and we we're like, well, we don't want to you know yeah. mess it up and and we got the guys you know hub city stompers are coming all the way from new jersey and we're starting in 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 texas and going to san francisco and back and uh oh. mind you we went in a in a van with no reverse <laughs> you had to just stop and park and make sure you were good to go wait, wait. so you 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 drove with the with the van that didn't go in reverse from 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 where to where from houston and we played shows all the way up to San Francisco <laughs> and then back. <laughs> San Francisco is very challenging because it's very hilly. Yes. Yeah. Wow. And that was the only place we actually got stuck for about 45 minutes. You know what I mean? I, I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so do you remember who all played on that th three floors of sky? Yeah. So there was a... Uh, the, you, probably the, have, you probably have a poster. Yeah, I do. Uh, you know, I probably do. It's actually in. I have a. I have a brief uh, suitcase, an old uh, Samsonite suitcase, just oh, nice. full, like like that much. I posters. bet. I bet. Of concerts uh, that you played, or concert or um, posters you collected. Uh, collected, played, oh, collected. kind of everything. Yeah, yeah. Um, a little bit of all. Um, but the Phenomenons were one of the big bands there. Mm -hmm. um, the Toasters, of course. Um, I got to see the pedal tones, Bubba and the pedal tones. Oh, yeah, yeah. When I first met him. Um, nice. There was a band called The Highlights that now is called The Amalgamated. Out of San Diego, yep. Out of San Diego, and then uh, uh, let's see, uh, uh, Bigger Thomas from New New, New Jersey. Uh, yeah. uh, shout Thomas. out to, uh, to yeah uh, to Mark, <laughs> Mark and and uh, and uh, uh, but yeah, let's see who else. Roger, yeah, here. Mark and Roger. Roger, there you go. Um, and then there were smaller bands. I think Penny Real was there. Okay. Yeah. Go, go 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 on, like go on, hey, yeah. And then uh I can't remember who else, but yeah, I was I was really excited. That's when I met 
met the the guys from the amalgamated and and uh, a bunch them. of nice guys too. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> indeed, indeed. That's true. That's true. That's um, guys. What other? So 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 before we talk more about the formation of of Bandulus, um, what other highlights from? playing in those Scott Punk bands or Los Canarles or, or, or anything else that you want to touch on? Man, we got to do, let's see, with Scarnales, we, man, I, it was such a short time, but right. a, lot, a lot of cool stuff happened. Like, uh, this is the first time the Agrolites came to Texas. Um, okay. I was, yeah, the very first time they came to Texas um, was like in 2006, I got to say, and uh uh, that's when I was being introduced as their guitar player. It was their last, their old guitar player, Kenny. I was replacing him after that weekend. And so uh, that was, that was really cool just to see the original Agrolites. Like, of course, of course. <laughs> just, yeah. Yeah. Well, so, so what was, what was your impression? Oh my God. Just like, <laughs> just crazy. I'm just like floored to see them. Cause I had only seen like little, I mean, back then YouTube wasn't really anything. Of course, right, right. Yeah. So you would see some clips here and there. And uh, and then trying to find the CDs was yeah. just so hard. Uh, right, right. Thanks to Chuck Wren is when I finally got one. Um, right. But uh, but yeah, a, spe and, a spectacle, a spectacle. The aggregate. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, just seeing them go crazy. And then Jay Bonner, the way he's just oh, yes, sir. on that face, yeah. way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. so we know you're a big uh rock study fan. Do you have uh or have you had the opportunity over the years to see? Some of the legends like Pat Kelly, Ken Boot, Alton Ellis, man, it's a long list in those uh, and that I mentioned. Good. Have all become um, ancestors. Have you had the opportunity? Not any of them, unfortunately. I remember when they did the big show of all of them. It was like Leonard Dillon, Alton. Oh, yeah, out here? Yeah, I oh, wanted to go. Yeah, I wanted to go yeah. so bad. I didn't make it, though. We have, in, some, I, have, some, we have some Yeah, the biggest. Yeah. Yeah, around, but I did get to see the Melodians. I've seen the Melodians. Okay. Uh, my, one of my favorites all time. And we played with Keith and Tex uh, out in Germany, and they they came through here as well. And mm. then uh, we played we, this year alone. We got to play with the Pioneers three times. There we go. <laughs> yes, three times. <laughs> three times this year alone. Yeah. 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 We did uh, two two shows with them in Germany in April, and then of course at mm. Supernova. Yeah, yeah, they they're touring now nonstop, nonstop. Yeah, yeah, doing doing great, nonstop. Great, great, uh, great business. Uh, nonstop. To Jackie and George for that. Yeah. So mm -hmm. so um so talk about forming um, uh, the Bandulus. So formed in in Austin. Yes. Yeah. So, uh. So uh, yeah. How that came about. In two thousand. So we were doing Ryan Scroggins' band, the Trenchtown Texans, um, and in like two thousand eight maybe even 2007, he ended up getting a job over at the zoo, at the Houston Zoo. He became a herpetologist. He's just okay. taking care of all the uh, the the frogs, the snakes, all the reptiles. Okay. The reptile house and uh, Komodo dragons, you name it, like wow. alligators. <laughs> yeah. Like he was, uh, so he ended up getting, you know, being really, really busy doing uh, zoo work. And that's his passion, one of his passions. He's also a great tattoo artist, one of my favorite, mm. favorite tattoo artists. Actually, I'll show you a quick yeah. my J. Cliff. <laughs> oh, <laughs> he, he did it that for me. Come. That is it's super about, cool. Yeah, it's about it's a dozen years old or so, but wow, that's super cool. But uh, so yeah, in 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 two thousand eight, I was like tired of sitting idle. Not really tired, but I was just like, well, I'm gonna keep my music going and trying to to play as much as possible. And so um, by then, I'd become friends with the guys from the Stingers. And Scarnales, of course, I was already in the band, but um, uh, Patrick Kelly, who was the original drum, well, not original drummer, but one of the drummers for the Stingers and for Los Scarnales, he played in both. He played a, another band called the Suffers. Uh, oh. if you know the Suffers. I do know of them. Um, so yeah, I, I, you know, I just kind of been shooting demos with him and Willie, the bass player from the Stingers, um, back and forth, and they were like, you know, you should really just make your own record, and so okay. that was kind of. The goal was just to make one record. <laughs> and uh, after we did it, um, you know, we got, luckily we got uh, Vic Ruggiero to, to come play keys on it. Uh, by, the, by then we'd be, become friends with the Slackers and uh, and a couple of other, my friend Matt Jacobs, who was a, a local guy who plays 
uh, Keith, who actually lives like 20 blocks from me now. It's funny that he's up here in Portland as well now. But uh, uh, yeah, I just really wanted to make a record to kind of get the songs that I've written out, you know, right. and, and, and it wasn't really, I didn't really see much past that until Willie was like, you really should like keep this thing going. You should like get a band together and, and make it happen. He's like, unfortunately, I can't. He just had a baby at the time. He had a little little girl at the time, and uh, and so his time was uh, he was he was busy. So what I did was uh, you know I had all these friends, all these connections with the amalgamated mostly, and um, I was like, man, I really want to tour. And a friends of mine in San Antonio, this band called River City All Stars, mm. they were also like, man, we would love to go you know out to California and play some shows, and so. Uh, so I was able to book a show. I was like, well, I can book this tour, but I'm going to need some of your musicians to help fill out my band. And so, uh, yeah, the first 10 shows or so, I had different people every time. Like right. I, had the same, I didn't have the same lineup twice for, yeah, for about 10 shows. Wow. And then, uh, it wasn't until 2009 I took those guys to California and kind of solidified my group. They were all from San Antonio. Okay, okay. Uh, and Mario, the guitar player, he's still with me. So <laughs> nice. he's still with me all these years later. And then, uh, but yeah, so it was like 2009. I finally solidified my group. And we did a couple tours then. So uh, people live I, in different, different cities, right? I mean, yeah, kids. Every, every time. I mean, even incredibly it, challenging. Wow. It really was. So for five years, every Tuesday for about five years, I would drive the 163 miles from Austin to Houston for ska <laughs> for, to play traditional ska like i yes, could play yes, i could play yes, punk yes. rock and stuff in austin yes. the, the 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 pool was so small then that you mm. couldn't really find the musicians to right play right stuff. i hadn't thought of that right so so from mm. 2009 until what what year did you relocate uh i re i relocated here in 2015 okay and why did you uh to get away from the heat <laughs> It was so hot. Oh, That's yeah. one of it. You know, another part was that I uh, I had lost my job and I really didn't want to find another job in Austin, as well as my wife at the time. We uh, She also lost her job and we were like, mm, we we're kind of done with Austin at that point. because kind of just want like a new start. So why you didn't yeah. to California since because this is a hot spot for scale rocks. We wanted to. We wanted to. But we were like, oh, I think it's going to be too expensive. We were just kind of discouraged. And then I had a really good friend um, come through on tour and uh, he lived here in Portland. Mm -hmm. So that's our, that's our bass player, Curtis Irie. Um, so, yeah, I was like, well, we, if we go to Portland like I could have a band right away. I could, I'd have to take a bunch of steps back to keep going forward, but, uh, which is what we did. So it took about, it took about a year before we got our, our feet back under us and, uh, right. and going again. And what's the scene like where you are in Portland? Now, now it's, you know, it's, it's fairly, you know, it's small still, but uh, there's a lot of bands. There's a lot of bands. There's like six bands that are that are playing all the time. I mean, and, 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 and who and who are who are some of those? Bands? Uh, we got uh, Buddy J's Jamaican Jazz Band. So they do oh, like okay. uh, yep. trad and and jazz stuff. Uh, then you got uh, the Cascadians. Uh, they do rock steady and like skinhead reggae, boss reggae nice. stuff. Nice. Uh, we got Los Malablados. Uh, they're like. Yeah, they're like uh, Eric is a saxophone player. He plays with Mephiscopheles. Oh, so okay. they, they were actually at the festival as well. They were um, <clears throat> uh, they were on the same day as we were. Okay, right. Um, how, how many hours from um, Portland to Los Angeles? It's about fifteen. Well, oh, that's not bad. So you, you know, twenty some of those bands will drive down here. We can yeah, it's ideal conditions. And yeah. uh, and not in Portland, but but Joey Altruda is up in Oregon somewhere. Yeah, he's in Astoria. So I've yeah. far. I've, I've I've hung out with him before. Uh, what's the there. difference? What what's the what's the hours? It's about two hour drive. It's a hundred miles. Mm, still not bad. And then Rich from Israelites. Yeah. And, oh yeah, so yeah, and we got the Israelites. He's here. He's he's just outside of town. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So, so yeah, so, so it's a, it's a decent scene up there. So are you all gigging? Like, like, do you do shows in and around town at all? Yeah, we do. It's, uh, we kind of like spread them out just so we're not, uh, saturating. Right, know, right, right, right. <laughs> the, 
Uh, uh, when were you last in Los Angeles, in the greater Los Angeles area? Last time we were there, huh? uh, we were it was we were on tour with the Scatolites in 2019. Oh, that's when, that's when we I met you at the Garden Amp the very first yeah, time. Yes, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and we and we played in the back room in that little yeah. locker room space. <laughs> that one. Right, right, right. Yes, that's um. What's her name? And we and we are going to talk about your your upcoming tour yeah. here in a minute too. Yes. Um. So so, um. You touched on, um, you touched on hearing Hepcat the first time. You touched on meeting and seeing uh, the Slackers, and then off air we were talking about how how you and I first met at Hepcat show here. So so talk about the significance to you personally, and even amongst the scene of those two bands, Hepcat and Sliders? Oh, man. I owe it all to Hepcat, honestly. Um, in what sense? In, in the, the sense that they, they like, they, that was the bug that bit me, that I was mm -hmm. like, okay, I'm getting rid of my distortion pedal. I don't <laughs> at all. There's plenty of people out there that have their distortion pedals, and yeah. good for them. Right. Uh, I wanted to, to, to kind of do this I wanted to learn how to play traditional ska and rock steady and reggae the the right way, kind of like, because a lot of people, you know, they still upstroke. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. like, no, it's all about the downstroke on that stuff. And like, so I just immersed myself with all the music that I could. And, yeah. uh, and just, and luckily I had, I had my friend Patrick, a different Patrick Kelly, the drummer, <laughs> not the Patrick Kelly, but <laughs> Uh, him and Willie, they really, and and Johnny Myers from the Stingers as well. Like they all really kind of just helped me out and and just taught me different techniques. And like, uh, for instance, like what to listen to to you know to you know to be able to write different chord changes or um, just really just in music theory in general. Mm -hmm. and, but yeah, I was just infatuated with Hepcat because of well, a how cool they were. I mean, that's, how, that's the top of the line. Right, right, and how how awesome they were to watch on stage. And, oh my god! No, that's that's another yeah, subject. I know. <laughs> I know. And then how clean, how clean and classic and classy it sounded. And they're brilliant um, three part harmonies. Right. Yes, exactly. And they're the I, class by themselves. I mean, like I said, I was a boys to men fan, so right, 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 right. Yeah. <laughs> Anything with harmonies, man. <laughs> right. 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 And then um and mm -hmm. then yeah, but unfortunately the first time you saw them live, yes, was what was it? You said November of twenty one, right? Yeah, November sixth. And Alex Barr, right. And that was mm -hmm. and they were on fire that night too. Yeah. So so the and then the slackers, so so you saw them the first time in Austin, you were saying, mm -hmm. um and 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 talk about um seeing them since and 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 even some of the friendship or collaborations with those guys oh, man. uh yeah so we ended up uh, when i was in ryan scroggins band okay we, we played these um uh, hub cities hub cities a motif throughout my life they're like one of my biggest friends and and family i kind of grew up with jenny whiskey basically in the scene Straight. we've been talking about that every time we see each other uh, <laughs> we're like man remember when you were i was probably 21 barely old enough to drink and uh they're just <clears throat> a year older than me um but anyway their drummer at the time nuno rodriguez he had a scooter club and a scooter rally in new jersey right. and uh, we played it once and then one year i went back by myself and i dj'd with with nuno and uh that time I went to DJ, Vic happened to show up. Nice. And uh, we ended up bowling uh, around because it was at this place called the Asbury Lanes. Oh, right. I know. Yeah. Yeah. You know about the Asbury Lanes? So you got bowling alleys on each side of the stage. And so people are bowling while the bands are playing. And then, and then there's people moshing in the middle. Right. Right. Uh, right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Vic played or Vic came <laughs> and then I ended up uh, just bowling with them for a while. And, uh, we hit it off and I'd, I'd say a couple months went by and then all of a sudden he texts me out of the blue. He's like, Hey man, I'm thinking about coming to Austin to do a couple of uh, solo shows. Uh, if you can help me, you know, book some stuff. And I was like, Oh, of course, you know, so I helped him out. And, uh, and now at the same time, when he came for that, that's when I got him in the studio 
to record the keys. Well, okay. <laughs> Time. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but but since then, Hilliard uh, had hit us up to you know because yeah, Dave Hilliard he they fly everywhere you know to play, so they always need a backline and a band to open up. So that just started a seven year relationship of us just. Yeah opening up for them anywhere across Texas and used right. over to New Orleans and stuff. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, a great, a great, great yes. friendship. You, we, we switch direction now. So let's talk about your latest album, the fourth release. Tell it like it is. Where the title came from? It's an Aaron Neville song. Right. Aaron oh. Neville. Yeah. Yeah. Man. yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. It's an iconic selection. Hey. Yeah, man, it's one of my favorites. Um, it's a, a song I grew up with. Yes. Um, and I got to give all the credit to Mario, my guitar player, Mario. He, during the pandemic, he did a bunch of demos and he was like, hey, man, check out this demo I did for uh, Tell It Like It Is. And so I just put the vocal on top of it. And uh, and we, you know, we joked around for half of the pandemic, like, oh, we're just going to put the demo out on a seven inch and sell that. Uh, but yeah, we ended up re-recording it. But uh, yeah, so Aaron Neville, man. What didn't somebody uh, did that song prior to Neville? It, yeah, uh, I I think Aaron's the first, but also Wilson Pickett did it. Mm -hmm. Wilson Pickett yeah. did it. Also, uh, <laughs> I think Don Henley did it. <laughs> right. And uh, Nina Simone did it as well. Oh wow! Okay, so oh, yeah, I, there might be right. there might be someone oh. before Aaron, mm -hmm. but I feel like I, I don't I, know. I know a version before before. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Um. So so this this release came out in the spring. What, um. What what is what is different about? Is there anything different about this release? Um. Compared to any others. Yeah. Um. There's hardly any solos on the whole record. <laughs> that was so, intentional. I. It wasn't really. It wasn't really a forethought until afterwards. We didn't really. I didn't really notice until afterwards. Um. What had happened was uh, we were supposed to do the London International Ska Fest right, mm. right, twenty twenty two. After we had already did the uh, Freedom Sounds in Germany, and then uh, we were coming back two months later to do London International Ska Fest. But uh, Sean ended up canceling. Right, I remember that. Yeah, after we had already bought our tickets and stuff. Like a few of us had our uh, like for me and for example, I had a a six night hotel stay that was non-refundable oh. <laughs> in in uh luckily it wasn't in london it was in amsterdam because they do this direct flight from portland to yep, amsterdam yep, yep and so um we were like well after the london thing we'll just hang out in amsterdam for a little while and uh so whenever that happened um since we had just played freedom sounds i i met victor rice and i met uh nico leonard uh leonard from uh, the Moon Invaders. Okay. Okay. Uh, he, yeah. He's uh, half of Batasonic Records. Him and Bruno. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. And right. So, um, uh, yeah. He, I, you know, we just kind of hit it off. Me and Nico, and and actually the whole band and Nico, we all hit it off. And uh, and so when Sean, you know, he had asked us originally if we could move our flights until this the next year, and I was like, I can't do that, man. I got non refundable stuff here, like and 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 not only that but so did uh you know so did mario my guitar player and all of our wives were coming <laughs> so we're like this is going to be like a friendcation like sure. hang. yeah and and so when that all happened uh i when the cancellation happened i just emailed nico immediately i was like hey man do you happen to have a couple days we can get in the studio and record a couple songs and uh, he was like, "Yeah, man, whatever you need, like I got you." And uh, you're always thinking recording, eh? That's yes. <laughs> like, well, we gotta gotta do some kind of you it's know, like, yeah, yeah, take advantage of the time yeah. that we're there. Of course. So, how many records you have to date? Uh, we have that's our fourth record. We have a fifth record that that's done. Mm -hmm. we just haven't it, we recorded it at Dap Tone as well, yes. and, which which uh, yeah, which yeah, I yeah, heard about, next, which is yeah. which is incredible. It's gonna come up next in the conversation. I mean, I mean, how that must have been. It was insane. That was supposed to be our third album, mm. but uh, it, I yeah. mean, we we worked on it for ten years. <laughs> wow, I mean, that's a lifetime. I mean, right. So so we're talking <laughs> we're talking the studio. We're Sharon Jones and Budo's band, and, and yes, 
Yeah, we got to use. I got top to see top artist. Wow. Say it. Top shelf artist. Top shelf. Yeah. Top shelf. Wait, so, so, and so, talk about how that came about. Uh, yeah. So uh, my friend, uh, you guys know Channel Tubes from New York. He he runs the Uzi Man band, the Full Watts band. Okay. Uh, I know of of him. Yeah. Uh, so so uh, just over the years, you know, I got a bunch of friends in New York, and um, um, Tubes was like, oh, you should, you know, I, we always wanted to work together, and so uh, the time timing was right in 2014. Uh, we went up there, and uh, we were supposed to record with at, at Tommy's studio, Tommy Brennick from uh -huh. Sugar Jones uh -huh. and uh, and Budos and all those bands. Uh, but ironically, so his place was called uh, the Diamond Mind. It's in Long Island City. Okay. Um, and it's still there. That's where Al Michaels Affair does all their stuff. Love that. Um, Love that. Yeah. So ironically, this band from London called Texas, <laughs> uh, they booked out the entire month that we were going to be there. And uh, Tommy was like, oh, sorry, we couldn't get you in here. And then, but he was like, but I can offer you the Daptone studio. <laughs> <laughs> And you, so said, like, uh, you said, twist my arm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, exactly. And so, uh, yeah, so we were able to get in there and, and cut 11 tracks, the bases of 11 tracks in three days. We had eight hours a day. And uh, and on the fourth day, we went back to get all of the bounce downs and uh, Budos was there uh, okay. mixing the uh, fourth record or something like that. But yeah, right. so, so, okay, wait, so this was recorded, you said, 10 years ago? Yeah, uh, the, yeah, uh, it's... The basses was recorded 10 years ago, like drums, bass, guitar, and, and keys. Uh, I did the vocals. I've, I've redone the vocals twice on it. <laughs> I, I did them. I said again? You weren't pleased with the uh, results? Yeah. Well, no, it's just that I I had gotten better as a singer. And and so, so yeah, I guess I wasn't pleased. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so, yeah, our... Uh, and that, and by the time um, we, I, I now had added Emma as a second singer and then mm -hmm. Leah as well as, a, as another singer. And because uh, Leah has been with me since the Texas days. She, she's joined us in probably 2012 okay. or something like that. Uh, Leah Farmer. And she was the one that was with us at, at Supernova. She's still with us. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. But so, uh, yeah. So, so anyway, we re re redid, we, we, we booked in 2019 march thir march 19th of 2019 to finish the album but of course covid hit mm. <laughs> and so and everything was a production uh it's all that would all just be on two ch uh, channel tubes the production yeah he he he's the one that, that that did all the stuff there right so so when when will um when will we be able to see and hear that hopefully real soon cuz i got i have it all now you I have it all it's done so, all right. uh, I am cutting two tracks. We're gonna redo those for an, the next record. Okay. Uh, the next new rec new record. <laughs> oh, what? Uh, how many tracks have would be? Uh, there was eleven, so there'll be nine. So I just need to. I was gonna. Ask well, is them. more than Maria for the buyers? <laughs> right. So I really want. Uh, I just want a couple dubs done. Mm. Uh -huh. And then that way, it's to make it back to eleven or twelve tracks. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then be able to release that and oh, remixes. There's, 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 so you have an engineer for the because I'm. Uh yeah yeah we have um, uh, we have a couple in mind. I have man, I'm lucky to know so many great engineers. <laughs> yeah yeah, and then there, there there's plenty of uh, of talent that could that could dub. Uh, yes, I could dub. Yeah, because now we now we work with uh, our touring drum. Well, uh, this next tour, Nico's going to be with us. <laughs> But uh, our our touring drummer uh, potentially is our friend Anthony Ebenanti uh, mm -hmm. from the band uh, The Drastics out of Chicago. Okay, mm -hmm. he's an amazing dub. Right, dub producer. Yeah. Well, you know, King Tubby Lady Foundation, man. People yes. just watch video. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And studio it's true. in his garage. It's true. It's true. So let's talk about uh, your some of the dates coming up uh your winter yeah you'll be working with the slackers and of course from right here in los angeles the yes. one and only jesse wagner wags, wags, call it. wags the barber uh, yes uh yeah affectionately wags yes let's <laughs> talk about that tour all right so hilliard uh dave hit me up just a few months ago and was like hey man do you guys would y'all want to go on tour with us in the west coast and i'm like of course it's like it's been a while since we've done a whole run with you guys <laughs> and uh 
He's like, would you mind if uh, if y'all would back Jesse? And I was like, oh yeah, of course. That would, that would be great. Just have have him do some some tunes and then we'll do our tunes. And then my wheels got spinning because, uh, you know, our drummer from Belgium, Nico Leonard, that I was just talking about, him, Vic, and Jesse have a band together called the Reggae Workers of the World. Oh, that's the Nico. Okay, I get it now. Yep. Yes, yep. that's that's Nico. Yes. Uh, so uh, those two records are really fun to listen yeah. to. And, yeah. uh, and they've only toured those records as a three piece. They've never toured it as a full band. And and if you listen to them, they're full production. Right. Everything's there. Uh, so I had gotten, uh, I talked to Jesse more recently. I was like, hey, man, what it, what it, if you thought if we would just do the Bandulus featuring the reggae workers. And so he was like, yeah, I'm all about, he's like, I'm not trying to make it the Jesse Wagner show. It needs to be a collaborative, you know, a thing. And I was like, yeah, let's do it more review style where, you know, you'll do some songs, I'll do some songs, Leah will do some songs and then we'll get Vic to play keys and do a couple songs as well. And then just make it a fun thing. Yeah, that's it's great. So explain that again. So yeah, so uh, the reggae workers, we're going to be doing like half reggae workers songs of the world and half Bandulu songs. And we're just going to, there's not going to be a, a, a point in the set like where there's a fine line and, and mm -hmm. one band's on either side of it. It's right. Just one uh, review style. Where, right. Yeah. And it's uh, not a West Coast or California for Jesse? Uh, all of it. So all of it. Here. From Vancouver to San Diego. There it is. Yes. Yeah. It's Vancouver, all over social media. Yep. And then we're and then we're all going over social media. Oh, and and, and here, here's the other connection with Los Yesterdays, right? Which uh gave gave uh, Roth, right? Gabe Roth, yes, yeah. Roth, man, right. Um yeah. right. So so Junior I'm happy for happy happy for Jesse. For for our audience. <laughs> so December fourth, starting up in Vancouver. Yep. Going to Seattle, Portland, Berkeley, Santa Cruz, Denver. Albuquerque, Phoenix, San Diego, Diego, Ventura, Anaheim. Yeah, nice. And yeah, we're ending with the Slack Fest in Anaheim. So yeah, yeah. and that's a big one, right? Yeah, uh, Steady Forty Fives are on that. Um, mm -hmm. Black or Negro. Mm -hmm. What's the uh, The Heart Tones, the other Penrose. Uh, Penrose. Oh, sorry, they're on Big Crown, which right. is mm -hmm. yeah, uh, which is El Michael's uh, label. Right. Uh, and then we're going to the East Coast, and we're doing four shows over there. With uh, with the heart tones and and Jesse's coming as well. Wow! And, oh, right. Yeah. So that's the um, uh, so we got DC, DC, yeah, DC, yeah, DC, yeah, yeah, yeah. Philly. No, uh, that that that'll be one. That'll be in one, addition definitely. to being musician, you guys are good friends as well. Yes, a bunch of <laughs> friends. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of fun. Family affair. Well, yes. uh, Jeremy, you mentioned a few times Europe. So so talk about the first time that you all toured overseas. Well, that was just this, uh, an actual tour. We'd been um, a couple times. The first time was just for one show, okay, uh, for the Freedom Sounds festivals. And 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 the reason we got on that was our our my good friends the Stingers. They did a reunion show, and now uh, I had since joined the Stingers band, and uh, and and my bass player Curtis as well. And so um, when they invited the Stingers, they also invited the Bandulus, and so. We were able to get in but then uh so we only did one week in there came back and then we went back and just recorded the second time so the first real full tour was this past april and right. we did the, the batasonic right here well, Rockstar, yes review tour with our friends the utopians from uh out of brussels out of uh belgium yes and, um, great yeah. rock steady kind of funky right. soul band uh just the best guys to be on the road with <laughs> and uh yeah we did 23 shows in 23 wow. days in and, wait uh, sorry say that again 23 shows in 23 nights yeah 23 shows in 23 days in six countries and <laughs> oh uh, my gosh it was just a whirlwind and and we played uh i mean we played spain which was a big deal to me because that's where uh, you know my family roots are there. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. I love Spain. Yeah. Yeah, that was our first time. My first time ever being there. Where, where in Spain did you play? Uh, we did Madrid. Uh -huh. uh, we did uh, 
uh, Barcelona and uh, this uh, Victoria Gasteis, oh, wow. all with all with the bad manners. So oh, we were, bad manners. <laughs> yeah, so we were opening up for bad manners and oh. hanging out with Buster every night, and uh, oh, that's and that's playing wild. these incredible venues that I felt like we had no business being there. But <laughs> you, know, you guys, you don't have a business being there. <laughs> no um, such thing. Yeah. So, so John, are you pleased with where you, uh, the direction in which your career going, what you have accomplished? Yes. So far? I'm very, very, very pleased. Yeah, man. It's it's been yeah. especially this year has been really big for us. Um, yeah, it seems like it's been a really good year for you guys. Yeah. Even, and how about your parents? Um, and my parents. Mm -hmm. they... uh, my, my my pops unfortunately passed away. A while uh right before covid thankfully right before covid because i don't think he would have liked that mm -hmm. at all uh but my mom's still down in austin or she's in mm -hmm. the austin area um still down there and my sisters are as well mm -hmm. but uh yeah yeah and they're pleased with what you're doing oh yeah because my i mean they're still my sister my little sister's a i'm not even the best singer in the in my family oh like, wow <laughs> like, oh, wait, <laughs> She's a professional musician too. Uh, she yeah, she's working on it, man. She's a, a an incredible singer. My mom is an incredible singer. Wow. Oh, and yeah. what and what genre does your sister like to sing? Yeah, everything, everything, like from mm -hmm. show tunes to soul music to wow. jazz. She loves jazz to uh, Tejana, you know, Tejano, excuse me. Uh, you know, she she bilingual so. It definitely runs in the family. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. And then, then I got my older brothers. Uh, my oldest brother, uh, Joe, he's down in Tucson. He's got a band that's like Americana, like desert rock kind of stuff. He kind of sounds like Tom Waits. Oh, no. Nice. Yeah, yeah, so it's a little like gravelly, gruffly voice, you know. And uh, and then, yeah, that. and then my other brothers, everybody plays something, but not everybody's pursuing it, you know. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You know, you mentioned Spain before, and uh, I was told, as a matter of fact, um, I read somewhere a couple of years ago where this the ambassador from Spain said that Jamaicans should start learning Spanish. Oh, yeah. Simple fact that uh, geographically close to um, Cuba, but right. more importantly is that reggae is the number one music in Spain. Ah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Did you hear a lot of reggae? Yeah. I mean, that's what he said. Yeah, I did hear. Well, we got to go to the. We got to go to the Tony. If you know Tony from Liquidator, the oh, Liquidator yeah. shop. Oh, to to his Talking to him right now. Wow. Oh yeah, yeah. We got to see. Uh, we got He's to go right to his manager. Yeah, we tell. We did link up at the um, Supernova. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, yeah, I didn't get to see him. I knew he was there. I'd heard he was oh, there. Yeah, yeah, right. He gave me a couple of records. Oh, nice. Yeah, man, nice guy. Yeah. Wow, small world. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Tim, where, where in Spain is is, is Liquidator, Liquidator based? Uh, in Madrid. Oh, okay. I, I, Madrid. I, I've gone a number of times. Right, I, right, I, right, yeah, right. Next time I need to, yes, I need to make sir. sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah that's we just, cool. we just happened to park a bus uh, about a mile away, so we were able to walk there. <laughs> hey, hey. And so for those of us who are unable to travel uh, to those uh you need places because we're not musicians. Where are some of the places that you've had the opportunity to perform in Europe? In Europe, all right. So uh, in Spain, you mentioned Spain. Six uh, countries in um, uh, Cologne, Germany is a big mm -hmm. one for us. That's where Freedom Sounds is. Yeah, and, right. Uh, let's see, Brussels. I feel like Brussels is going to be a big one for us right now because that's where the label is based from. Our, we're on Batasonic. Batasonic, right. So yep. uh, Brussels, and then uh, I know we're playing. Amiens in France again. So this is just our, our, our we're going back next summer. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah. So, uh, so and we're, yeah, we're going to record another record and tour around that. So I'm hoping because our, our Tell It Like It Is sold out after two months. Wow. And uh, I'm hoping by next, next summer that we'll do a repress. Yeah. So. That's, that's great. But too bad your dad isn't around to see your accomplishment. No, he would be, he would, he would be ecstatic. He had himself with joy, I tell you. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that, that's how I have all my gear. I have all his old stuff. Like, oh, wow. Yeah, okay. he, we were poor, but I was rich in anything I wanted. I was, you know, obviously rich in love, but uh, anything I wanted, he had and, and would give to me. How poor could you be when your grandfather had a bar? Right. <laughs> 
That's true. That's true. <laughs> you need to use the word poor selectively. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, um, uh, all right. So, so next summer European tour, what else do you think 2025 will look like for you guys? Man, uh, uh, we're doing this thing in, uh, in, in Philadelphia called This Is Not Croydon Fest. Oh, right. And so we're playing uh, on Sunday with Westbound Train. Uh, uh, again, yeah. Hub City Stompers is there. Uh, Cat Bite will be there. Um, I'm forgetting a couple other names right now, but uh, Power Up, I know, will be there. And, uh -huh. But yeah, throughout the weekend, you still got, you got Big D in the kids' table, mm. uh, Stubborn All-Stars. Nice. Um, yeah, so it's it's just an another another nice festival. But uh, you know, I I I need to rewind a little bit and say yeah. a big thank you to the interrupters because uh, we yeah we we this whole thing kind of started with them asking us to do the first three shows of their last spring tour. Oh, nice. Okay. So yeah, we ended up doing a bunch of shows with them. Uh, just through the Pacific Northwest with them and uh, Bedouin Sound Clash. Right. Yes. 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 Uh, yes. Yeah. I, I, I was able to catch the the show at the Wiltern here. But oh yeah. Oh, that was really cool because that was like the Hepcat hybrid kind of. Oh, I know both. Yeah, both. Yeah. Both Gregs couldn't make it, and so Jesse increase. Oh, oh, they pull it up. Say that. Oh, yeah. like, <laughs> <super special. laughs> they do that. <laughs> yeah, they pulled it up. They, 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 they really did, and um, yeah, yeah. But no, shout out to interrupters and. <laughs> And uh, really happy for all their success. Um, yeah, man. Uh, and it happened fast, eh? Yeah, it really did. Well, yeah. and 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 speaking of the Bavona brothers, um, uh, we're recording this just a few days after the the Greg Lee tribute concert at, at the at yes, the right, friends. And, um, and uh, all three of the Bavona brothers were able to jump up on stage with the Agonites wow. guys, and and it was yeah, it was pretty special. But only in Los Angeles, yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> I kid you not. Yeah. yeah, but um, it was a night, a spectacular night. Oh, man. I, I've been watching all the footage on uh, on oh, Instagram. I know, I know, and, and more and more footage to come too. So, nice. so, so we'll keep you posted there. But um, uh, so uh, before we before we say goodbye, uh, I, I know that we just scratched the surface, and 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 uh, you've accomplished a lot with a lot more to come. But anything that you want to make sure to touch on tell the audience um and viewers uh about about you or about uh the Bandulus? man just a, a big thank you to anybody who's listening and and um and 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 specifically because we we like to preach the roots of the music right yes so it's kind mm -hmm. of a thing that i've been doing in our shows lately where um where i'm just like hey man like it's great that all oh, you guys came out here for the sky punk and the sky stuff but like please know about the roots and please just continue to, to, you know, spread the gospel, as I say, uh, and, 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 and get the, get the kids to keep, to keep forming new bands. To yeah. Keep so important. Going. So important. And, uh, yeah, man. And, and just a big thank you to anyone who's, who's picked up a record, came to a show, bought a t-shirt, bought a sticker, whatever it is. <laughs> uh, like, it's just, yeah, it's just been, I've been fortunate enough to, to keep, doing this for so long yeah yeah so, but the, 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 that support so any important. any career highlights that we haven't touched on that you would like to bring forth before this, we put this yeah. stuff on oh we got to you know we got to back um norma frazier i know you had norma oh you're right right uh, yeah she, yeah she, she um, she's right. he's a firecracker i love working with her um that's that's been great uh man I, you, you guys are her backing band when she, uh so we've, only, we've only done it once but oh, nice. uh, oh, yeah but oh. she's 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 called on us a couple of times but it, it, it's always been where we're already busy right uh, oh okay. but she just lives right down the road she which is in, why uh, i was under the yeah, assumption right. that you guys yeah. were back in back yeah oh. i would i would love to make that happen i should give her a call and be like hey i, I think you should <laughs> she's bright intelligent She's yeah. oh, doesn't put up with any BS. <laughs> yep, that's right. <laughs> Humorous, right? Yeah. Oh, I gotta say a big shout out to an, an LA guy, Mr. Esteban Flores. Like, oh he, yes, man. You know, he helped me. Uh, he actually wrote uh, the music for three songs on the newest record. Oh, Esteban uh, did. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, he did. Uh, Not tonight. Uh, a tune called "Honest Goodbye" and another tune. Uh, 
I'm drawing a blank right now. But yeah, you're looking um, for songs because I have a whole bunch written. Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Get my way. <laughs> Wait, so, yeah, so uh, Esteban is one where where we need we need to have him on our 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 series here because talk about just a guy who plays in numerous bands, yes. super talented. Mm -hmm. uh, wasn't he living up? He's still here. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, he's, he's in uh, Salem, which is yeah. 40 minutes away. You yeah. Know? Yes. So, yeah, yeah, he's still around. And yeah, and just flying back and forth to wherever he needs to be. Right, right. Yeah, big <laughs> shout out. Um, and, and real quick, when you said that in your set, you, you obviously uh, make sure to talk about the roots of the music. In a typical Bandulu set, you're doing uh what 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 cover songs are you doing if any uh, oh this past uh year we 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 always we brought back lady with a starlight we've been doing that one nice. yeah uh, and, ken booth? uh we did uh, the kim booth yeah yeah mm -hmm. and then we did uh at at supernova we did just tell me the toots yep uh that tune and then um we do uh this uh, it's been a while, but we do this band. Uh, this band called Them Too. It's a band, it's a song called "Am I a Good Man," but it's it's a it's a soul number. Okay, so nice. Been doing that one, um, and then who else? Let's see. Uh, we've done uh, "What Does It Take," Alton Ellis. Um, I, I do uh, me and uh, me and Leah and uh, and Mario will do like a trio sometimes, and Ooh. and we'll do. A, a bunch of covers, just acoustic style, you know, where Mario's playing the same piece. And, and uh, how do you go about deciding what songs to cover? Uh, you know, whatever. But the whatever. list is so extensive. Yeah, I know. I know. Um, I, I, I'm open to suggestions all the time. Um, so <laughs> somebody in the band will be like, oh, you know, we should do that one. I'm like, yeah, let's do it. Or, uh, uh, for instance, I, I did the song Tonight by John Holt for a long mm -hmm. time and all my tears from uh, okay. uh, big tune uh one that, that's a little more ambitious that i haven't been doing is uh can't you see by by ken booth oh yeah can't you see yeah that's <laughs> love that one too uh, man love you it. can't go wrong with anything by ken booth or alton ellis yeah mm -hmm. i kind of want to do yeah. one of those uh one of those uh halloween shows where you just cover studio one or something like yeah. do a whole bill where where everybody's doing uh cover bands you know but true Yes, yes. One of these years. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Jeremy, we really appreciate you taking the time. Uh, yeah, man. We're, uh, we're going to see you in December when you're passing through uh, the, 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 uh, the SoCal area. Going to make yes. a awesome. of it. Um, encouraging people to get out there and so see that'd you. that be homecoming for Jesse? Yeah, it yes. will be. Yeah. Homecoming for a while. Let us, know, let us know if you ever need someone for Skymania. <laughs> oh, well, let's... 2025. Yeah. yeah. Let me know. We'd love to come. Yeah, let's plan down. something. That would be All great. Right. Yeah, yeah, let's plan something. All I'm right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let's well, plan let's, something. Let's make that happen. Well, uh, I think we reached our destination. Yes, am sir. I right or am I right? Anything yes, else you wanted to add that we have uh, A big thank you to you guys, man. Uh I you know, I love love uh loved meeting you when I whenever I saw y'all at the Hepcast show, I was like, yeah. I, saw, uh, I was like, oh. I gotta go talk to <laughs> Junior and Eric over here. I'm I'll glad right you back. did that, Jeremy. Yeah, <laughs> that, was, that was nice. So yeah, man. So thank you guys for everything you guys do, because I mean, y'all are y'all are essential in all of this. Well, thank you. <laughs> yes, sir. appreciate that, and uh, and and again, congrats on on uh, all all the success to date um, and accolades for Bandulus, and I know there's mm -hmm. a lot a lot more to come. And and uh, and additionally, it. yeah, additionally, you did mention some bands up. Uh, in your area that plays traditional music. Yeah. They're not as, as established, but maybe they could find a way to work their way down into Los Angeles in a big group. Yeah, they, yeah, I know they want to. I know they want to. So, yeah, that I would love. Yeah, especially like uh, the Cascadians. Yeah. Uh, that's, Leah, our singer, That she fronts that band. Mm -hmm. she fronts, okay. She's the front woman of that band. And our drummer, Terrence, he's in that band as well. Yeah, they okay. have to find a way down to LA. I'm not sure how they do it. But if man can go to the moon, I think they can be. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> indeed, indeed, indeed. I just about it, Mr. Yes, Kohler. sir. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Well, thanks to everyone for their ongoing support. And please subscribe to this podcast series and YouTube channel. Follow at History of LA Scare.
on Instagram and join our Facebook group. This series is produced by the Rocker Radio, Eric Kohler. And Junior. Yes, thank Does you. Sean play the role in? Yes, and Sean. yes, of course. Mm -hmm. Yes, Fantastic. Sean Eichenberg. Mm -hmm. um, Junior, thank you. Jeremy, a pleasure. Looking forward Bye. to seeing you in, in the coming months. Um, appreciate right. everything. And mm -hmm. we, we are also... Yes, sir. Yeah, and for the benefit of uh, those who are listening in the greater Los Angeles area, when will you be down here again? We'll be there, uh, let's see, in Anaheim on uh, December 15th and yep. in Ventura the day before, so mm. the 14th. Nice. That's just, that's just commercial. Just in time, just before the holiday. Yeah. That's <laughs> commercial. Exactly. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, and we appreciate all the support out there, everyone who watches, listens to this podcast series. So thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to leave you with this. Um, please continue to do your part to celebrate and preserve the scene and come out, put on your dancing shoes and enjoy mm -hmm. yourself. Yes. And with that, much love and be well. Jeremy, until next time, Junior. Yes. Thanks, everyone. Take care now. Thank you. Bye.